Coming to this conference, I was a little rushed in time, so I stopped at a drive-thru for a quick sandwich and a coffee. I love how convenient that is. You just drive in, drive out. I had that crispy bacon sandwich with the foamy hot latte. It was delicious. Between us, let's be honest, I don't think I could have been better served in the five minutes it took them to prepare it. It was fast, convenient, affordable. Had I done my own sandwich, I could have kept it sizzling warm for many hours in my lunch bag with mayonnaise and chicken. By the time I would have eaten it, I would have been cooked. So the only worry I had was what was I going to do with the packaging trash that was now sitting on the carpet of my car. <laughs> I couldn't just leave it there because it would eventually smell up and it wouldn't just magically disappear or biodegrade. So I needed to manage it. Which brings me to my main topic. In the last 70 years, the packaging industry has been instrumental for the improvement of our food quality and safety. But where we gained in practicality and safety, we lost in our capacity to manage our environmental footprint and our waste materials. I'm a food engineer. I've worked in the food industry for the past 10 years. I've worked in fresh cut fruits, confectionery, ice cream, chocolate, even pet food. And I've developed numerous retail products. Working in the food industry, I've grown increasingly concerned of the lack of importance that is given to overpackaging and especially the single-use plastic items. You've probably all heard that prediction from the World Economic Forum stating that by 2050, there would be more plastic than fish in the ocean? Well, that will only make the Great Pacific Patch bigger. You know that giant floating garbage patch on the offshore of California, which some scientists say is as big as Texas? Well, it actually exists, and Texas is a pretty big state. I made a joke to my fiancé that we should go take our vacation there sometime, go sea kayaking and explore a living, growing monument. But all jokes aside, I'd actually be curious to see it. So why does all this matter? Well, the pollution generated by food packaging has reached a critical point. And as the world's population increases, so will the problem. The main issue is that food packaging is a single-use item that is immediately disposed of once consumed. And I guess there is some urgency to act, as the quantity of plastic that was produced from 2000 to 2010 is about the same quantity that was produced the entire century that preceded. The numbers tell the story quite clearly. 300 million metric tons of plastic are produced every single year worldwide. 30% of that is immediately disposed of after consumption. So let's play with the numbers a little bit. Let's have fun. 30%, okay, that's 100 million metric tons of plastic used once and then thrown out. How can we imagine these big quantities? How can we illustrate this? Okay, let's start with one ton. One ton can also be compared to a pallet of bananas. So one ton, a pallet of bananas. So what would 100 million pallets of bananas look like? Where would we store that? If we put one pallet of bananas next to each other, we could go around the earth two and a half times. That is a lot of plastic thrown out 
every single year. I guess there'd be no issue if we were actually talking about bananas, as they would just decompose in a few months. Plastic, however, doesn't decompose. It breaks down into micro pellets, which will remain in our food chain for the next few hundred years. So collectively, it seems like we're caught between a rock and a hard place. On one hand, I wouldn't want to reduce my pace of life and say goodbye to drive throughs and all those ready-to-eat convenient foods. And I'm sure we're all in the same boat here. And I'm not talking about that boat that was floating on the Great Pacific Patch. However, how am I going to explain this environmental disaster to my one-year-old son, Henry, when he grows up and his reality is that plastic micro pellets are omnipresent in the food chain. We literally have no idea what will be the impact of this from a public health perspective. Okay, so let's take a step back. Packaging science has had a major role in our general good health and increased lifespan. Why? Because it protects fresh and processed foods from contaminants, oxidation, microbial spoilage, while generally increasing the shelf life of food and providing an opportunity to transport goods worldwide. So now that we've made all this progress, now that we know what works, let's change the paradigm. Let's switch them all around. Why use limited resources of fossil fuels that create carbon emissions to produce plastic items that will be used once and then pollute the food chain for centuries to come? Why not use industrial biomass residues, put them in a bioreactor, have the microorganisms digest the residues to produce a bioplastic that will have similar properties as fossil fuel plastic. It's pretty much like if I was saying that we would use all those banana peels and make plastic out of that. It sounds like science fiction, right? Well, in fact, this PHA bioplastic process was invented at about the same time as fossil fuel plastics. But for many historical reasons, bioplastics never made it to the industrial age. So in this regards, bioplastic isn't totally new. But what's new is the market opportunity due to the increased pressure of consumers to companies to make a positive change in their products. In the last 10 years, there's been a lot of development in regards to the bioplastic industry. In the last five years, we've slowly been seeing finished products emerge from this new circular economy because the solutions are now cost-effective. The science is there, and the new materials are now in development. So what if I can continue to consume the way I do, but it would impact the environment so much? Well, I guess there ain't no free lunch. And there'll always be some environmental cost or actions. But at this point, our collective choices can be to mitigate the consequences of our fast-paced lives. Like any big and necessary change, it starts with small and simple steps. And together, this is how we cultivate the future. Thank you.